Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew McCabe. I'm the professor of audio technology at Columbus State University. We have a little utility that we've created to help uh, export concerts from Pro Tools. If you record a lot of classical concerts, you end up with these really long regions that need to be cut up into different CD tracks. So the Pro Tools Auto Bouncer will help you save a little bit of time and automate the process of exporting individual tracks from Pro Tools. So let me show you how it works. Now, the first question you might ask yourself is, aren't there simpler tools that you can do this with? And the answer to that question is yes. Obviously, using Logic or WaveBurner or something like that is uh, another way of accomplishing the same thing. But we teach Pro Tools here, and our studio is centered around a Digi003 box, and we've just kept up with Pro Tools over the years, though we, we do have Logic and other pieces of software on campus that we can use for these things. But I teach Pro Tools in my classes, especially to the beginners, uh, because I think the editing facility is much better. So that's why I wanted to keep our recording studio centered on Pro Tools. Also, given the fact that we record more than 200 concerts uh, every academic year, it's really important to have a compartmentalized process that all nine of my student workers can understand. After a concert recording is complete, the session typically looks like this. It's just one big block. We start recording at the beginning of the concert and stop it after the final applause. The next step is to divide the session up into individual tracks. This is either pieces or movements. There's a fade at the beginning and a fade at the end of each region. Notice too that we typically multi-track all the concerts. We have an ambient pair and a tight pair that can be balanced later but the regions are all the same size. This is really important in order for the auto bouncer to work. Of course, the goal of all this is to have a folder that's full of numbered tracks that can easily be burned onto CD. There's a few settings we need to make in Pro Tools in order for this to work. The first is that we have to have the selection tool turned on. The second is that we're going to use a track as a guide. Notice all the regions are the same size here. We're also going to turn on Link Timeline and Edit and Link Track and Edit. Now I'm going to go to the transport here and just rewind it to the beginning. We're going to do that again in just a second. But here I am launching the Auto Bouncer Apple Script. You can see the code. It's very simple. Just press the Run button. This particular concert has 15 tracks, so I'm going to put in 15. Hit OK. And the script's going to ask me to go back and rewind to the beginning again. So I'll just do that. Reselect my guide track. Then off we go. We're bouncing and the, the script will actually count the number of tracks and name them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc. So this will take just a minute, uh, but while this is running, uh, just a quick reminder that if you want to set particular bounce settings before you start running the script, you have to do that before you start the auto bouncer. So if you hit bounce, change it to A for wave or whatever your sampling rate and bit depth are ahead of time, then once the auto bouncer starts running, those settings will retain. Also, unfortunately, you can't use the computer while this is working because the script is pretending to be the keyboard, so Pro Tools has to stay in focus. Let's just skip ahead here and you'll be able to see what happens at the end of the track. What the Apple script is actually doing is opening a shell and asking the system if there's any open AIF files. You can change that in the code if you want to use a different file format, but we like to stick with AIF. As you can see, there's a little bit of a delay, but the script will then use keystrokes to tab to the beginning of the next region, select the opening fade, the track itself, and the closing fade, press Option Apple B, and then type in the next number of the track. I'd like to give you a general overview of how this code works. Basically, Apple Script is pretending to be the keyboard, and it's using the keyboard shortcuts in Pro Tools to automate the bouncing process. This first part of the Apple script are just the dialog boxes. Those are the things that you're going to type in numbers. This second large part is a big loop. And what it's doing is telling Pro Tools to activate and send it a tab. Now if you recall, we set link timeline and edit selection. So the tab key is going to advance on our guide track to the beginning of the first fade. After that, the system will hold down the shift key and press tab three times. That selects the first fade, the audio, and the last fade. Next are all the keystrokes necessary to open the bounce dialog box, press return, and type in the track number. That's option Apple B, 
wait half a second, press return, wait half a second, and then type in the number of the track that we're on that's being counted by a line of code above. It's represented by the variable x. This next section is where we're waiting for the bounce to, to finish. In a nutshell, that shell script command is counting open A files. Of course, you can change that to whatever file extension you want, but it does work by file extension. This last part of the loop looks similar to the beginning, but what it's going to do is queue up to the beginning of the next fade in order for those keystrokes at the beginning to work again. So I hope everybody finds this little script useful. Maybe it'll save you some time. It certainly saves us a lot of time. And hopefully Avid will build in some new features into the next version of Pro Tools that will make it Apple scriptable or automate some of these processes for people like us who do a lot of classical recording. Thanks for watching.